Welcome back, I'm Kelsey Fabian. Dr. Musman, a plastic and reconstructive surgeon at Alpena Regional Medical Center, joins us this morning. Good morning, Dr. Musman, how are you? Thanks, Kelsey, very good. Uh, thanks for having me on to talk about facial trauma. So tell us a little bit about facial face protection, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, trauma remains the number one uh, cause of death uh, in uh, the age group under 40 and uh, the number one loss of work. About 11% of traumas that present to the emergency room will have some sort of facial fracture. Uh, it's important to talk about facial fractures uh, because number one, they're frequently ignored. Uh, number two, uh, early treatment often avoids devastating results and leads to better long-term results and much easier achieved than uh, waiting a long time. When you say they're ignored, you mean someone gets hit in the face, thinks it's not a big deal, doesn't do anything about it? Precisely, precisely. A lot of times uh, uh, the usual symptoms uh, don't present until the swelling has gone down. By then, the bones have already started to remodel and heal. Also, uh, other um, devastating injuries could be ignored that are frequently associated uh, with uh, facial fractures and facial trauma. Uh, somebody that uh, just received the um, energy that, that may uh, uh, lead to facial trauma, such as a car accident, a softball to the face, uh, should be evaluated by emergency staff uh, immediately uh, or as soon as possible. Uh, because uh, things that might not seem like a big deal, such as a broken nose, uh, that might have a little runny clear fluid uh, coming out of it, or maybe a little swollen part in the middle. Those could be things like draining CSF from the brain fluid or a septal hematoma, both things that are very easily treated early on, uh, but if ignored, could lead to a life-threatening infection or complete collapse in the nose, which can be treated, but it's actually very, very difficult and leads to a much bigger operation than uh, just a small procedure in the emergency room. Other things you can uh, experience uh, if you have received a facial trauma and you think uh, this might uh, have led to a fracture, double vision, blurry vision, the teeth are very sensitive. If they're not lined up right, uh, the person will know that right away. Uh, numbness uh, in the face, especially the lower face, uh, can um, portail uh, a facial fracture. And again, I, I can't stress enough that uh, early diagnosis, we have excellent uh, radiography and emergency room personnel here. Uh, they'll be able to give a full workup and say, you know what, you're fine, or you know what, this will need surgical intervention. Uh, because it, when the swelling goes down, a person might look in the mirror and say, you know, I look okay. I, I think I'll just wait this out. Unfortunately, in the uh, example of an orbit fracture, as the swelling goes down, the eye sinks back in the head, leads to a very complicated and often very unsatisfying ophthalmology surgery to try to regain um, balance in the eye, uh, where in the first few days, uh, to just restore that volume uh, with minimally access, no scar techniques that I use, uh, can lead to uh, virtually no uh, long-term side effects. So basically, the, if it is a serious injury and you wait and you don't take care of it, the surgery is much more intense later on? Much more intense. Uh, can Sometimes can it not be fixed? They can be fixed. Uh, the results can often not be as optimal okay. and, uh, and often result in re-breaking the bone, which again starts the whole healing process. And to, in today's busy world, people can't take that amount of time off of uh, their life, really. And so uh, to uh, receive the injury, receive the uh, treatment in the immediate, po uh, immediate post-traumatic period, and then heal all at once in the correct uh, uh, form restores the function also. Now, for someone to protect their face, whether it's sports or um, driving, you know, airbags or something, what, what would you suggest for viewers to do if they do want to protect themselves? Well, you bring up a very good point. Uh, the uh, etiologies of facial fractures are uh, assault in uh, certain age groups of male, uh, but it, it was very commonly a motor vehicle accidents. That's dropped from 25% of motor vehicle accidents to 2% of motor vehicle accidents with the introduction of airbags. And sports, uh, most, most sports starting in, uh, you know, with uh, kids sports, uh, have very strictly regulated uh, mouth guards and uh, facial protection equipment. And that has dropped uh, incidents of facial fractures from sports to almost zero. That said, I do uh, occasionally see a, a softball to the face, et cetera. Uh, we could go through a, uh, some examples if we have time. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. The, uh, the, uh, there, uh, sorry, there, sorry. you can just talk there on the screen, he'll sure. pop them up for okay. you. Uh, 
as you can see, the uh, uh, nasal fracture uh, seen here, uh, you don't have to be a doctor to see uh, that this person has a nasal fracture. Uh, but as I mentioned before, uh, an emergency room uh, personnel could uh, easily set this uh, uh, cartilage and set this bone uh, uh, and, and lead to a long-term, uh, less traumatic and more functional recovery. Also, he could have a CSF leak that needs to be evaluated, uh, which can easily be treated with antibiotics 90% of the time, not leading to a neurosurgical intervention. However, uh, meningitis, which is when the, uh, it's not treated with antibiotics and the infection goes the other way, can obviously be life-threatening. Oh, wow. uh, septal hematoma kills the cartilage and leads to complete collapse of the nose. Uh, that can be reconstruction, reconstructed. I need to uh, use ribs, uh, which is obviously much more complicated right. than just draining out the hematoma in the first hour uh, that it's happened. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It was great having you.